Wow, she's gorgeous. Do you mind if I pet your dog? Of course. What's their name? This is Penny. How old is she? She's two and a half. Is she a German Shepherd? She's a German Shepherd. And I'm so sorry, what's your name? I'm Noah. You got Do you mind if I join you on your walk? Let's do it. So tell me the story of how you first met Penny. We had a neighbor move into our neighborhood in Stratford, Vermont. Uh, my mom got a German Shepherd puppy from them. It's the middle of COVID, and like we thought the world was just never going to go back to normal. And yeah. my parents lived on 135 acres of land, and oh, so really? the perfect place for a dog, especially a dog like a German Shepherd, who, as you can see, needs a lot of space to run around. <laughs> uh, um, and I went to the house to go pick up the dog, and there was one dog left that no one wanted. I literally impulsively just picked her up and, and, and bought her and walked out of the house with the dog. It's like, like a five minute decision making period and I was like, you know, the world's never gonna be the same again. I might as well get a dog and yeah, it kind of changed my life. Like I had to learn how to train her and I had to learn how to take care of a dog. I could barely take care of myself. And uh, it was a, a real experience, like a very um, new experience for me and taught me a lot about myself and about taking care of things and being responsible. And yeah, she's just my best friend. And you're on tour right now. Is this the first tour that Penny's been on? Uh, this is the second time she's been on tour, but she kind of has been on tour her whole life. Like I, the second I got her, I knew I'd be touring again and working a lot and wanted to make sure she was used to travel. So we were in the car, on the bus, uh, driving to different places, driving to Boston, driving around New England, just getting her used to being on the go. Do you have any other dogs in your life? We've always had dogs in the house. Mm -hmm. My dad actually has, we have four German Shepherds. Oh, Penny's wow. sister, Oma, my brother's dog, Poncho, my dad's dog, Meadow. So there's four German Shepherds running around the house at all times. We have a couple other dogs at the property. Like I said, we have a lot of land. So I tell people it's like the place that parents tell you your dog goes when they die. It's like <laughs> this giant farm with just dogs running around everywhere. It's, uh, it's pretty fun. And Penny and Oma, they're on the cover of Six Season, right? Yes, Penny and Oma looking much more well-trained than they actually are, <laughs> as you can see. Uh, but, <laughs> but yeah, they are sitting on, the, on the, my mom's lawn in Stratford, Vermont. And the name of that album, that was their idea, right? Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, they were the, definitely the inspiration. A lot of sticks, and it was perfect to have Oma with a stick in her mouth for the for the shot. Like we didn't actually plan on using that location, but it just looked so good and represented like, you know, what the album was like, which was basically me throwing sticks and balls for my dogs while I wrote songs <laughs> in my mom's house. Why German Shepherds? Have you always had them? We so we grew up having German Shepherds. We had a few different types in between then. But what I love about German Shepherds is their loyalty and their emotionality and their expression. And I spent a lot of time on my own. Mm -hmm. Especially making this album, and you know, during the pandemic, and I really just wanted a friend. <laughs> and and Penny's and German Shepherds to me are really man's best friend, like the best example of what man's best friend means, and mm -hmm. um, they're just a, kind of the quintessential friend of a dog. This episode of We Walk Dogs is brought to you by Brooks Running. They have shoe options to fit your life on and off of a run, and they're the only shoe you should ever walk your dog in. I checked, I can say that now. Today I'm wearing the Glycerin Stealth Fit, which is designed for total comfort regardless of my pace. Huge thanks to Brooks Running for sponsoring this episode. We're so glad your team loves dogs just as much as we do. And now you have a lot of songs that mention dogs. Yep, almost, yeah, I feel like almost every single one has, has a dog reference. <laughs> well, we're gonna put you to the test. There's six of them. Okay. Can you name them all? Should be able to, let's see, okay. Mess. All my love. With the pills and the dogs. Howling. Love comes and goes with a big black dog. He trails along. Yep. Three more. Your needs, my needs. Howling like dogs in the light of the moon. Um. Oh God. Oh, they're the best ones, Noah. Mess. <laughs> Mess. Your needs. Howling. All my love. Pills and the dogs. Um. Oh shit, how do I not know all this? So am I missing one more? Two more. <laughs> one has an extended well, version. Oh, <laughs> oh, the day and the mad dog. <laughs> Viewers in the villages. The the Why do I write so much about dogs? Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> What's the next one? I don't know. It's Paul Revere. Oh my God, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, I don't know we were doing dead dogs and alive dogs. Oh. Okay, cool, yeah. Paul Revere has dogs in it for sure. <laughs> 
streets where we bury the dog. Damn, that's crazy. What a crutch, lyrically, for me. <laughs> we actually found three more. We've got A Troubled Mind. My brain's a dog asleep that I cannot let lie. Please. And the dog stopped at their house on the porch. And we got him on a technicality with Everywhere Everything. He says dog-eared. We think that counts. And all of our books page is dog-eared. Why do you think it's so easy to incorporate dogs in your art? I think they're just such a huge part of my life. Like, they just... They just have so much to do with my day-to-day -day experience in Vermont. Mm -hmm. My experience in my life every day, like dogs are a huge part of it. I think they represent a lot about humans and a lot about relationships. And for me, they represent a lot about like what my experience in the world is. Like for example, like when I was really going through it, writing a song like Howling, like literally the soundtrack to like what I thought was like me losing my mind was like the dogs barking in the wind and like it feels like they kind of soundtrack my life in a lot of ways um, and also like everything I do I do with my dog um, and so that's they've just played a huge role in my career so far safe to say there's more songs about dogs coming absolutely absolutely <laughs> there's there's a lot more I feel like if, we, if there's six I've only released so many songs like six songs with dogs is like <laughs> a pretty big major like, fraction. <laughs> so I'm gonna rely on that for the rest of my career, I think. For Mess, you had a bunch of professionally trained dogs for the music video. What yep. was that experience like? It was really cool, like working dogs. Like uh -huh. they have like a union and stuff, it's pretty crazy. They were all really sweet and it was cool to hear like the other things that they've been in. Mm. Honestly, the dogs were like a lot cooler than the owners. <laughs> <laughs> I was like finding myself just wanting to be like, okay, yeah, yeah, cool, they were in. Aladdin, I just want to talk to your dog <laughs> for a little while, like I don't care. But they were really well trained and it was cool to like, literally like on command see a dog perform an action so perfectly, so quickly, like literally choreographed, like better than I could do, like yeah. if I was trained. Like <laughs> it was a really cool experience and like I just got to spend all day working with dogs. Music videos are the worst, like you just spend all day like doing shit over and over again. I'm not Daniel Day-Lewis, I don't know how to act. Like I basically just try to construct a music video that allows me to do fun shit. And that was basically like just hanging out with dogs all day, which was, which was cool, it was a perfect day. Do you ever write a lyric and think to yourself, oh yeah, that's gonna make everyone cry? I th yeah, sometimes I'll, <laughs> sometimes I'll write a lyric and then I'll read it afterwards and be like, that is incredibly depressing. <laughs> or I'll be like, I didn't even know I was struggling with that necessarily. Mm -hmm. So like sometimes I'm surprised by it. I guess I definitely don't like wanna like manipulate or like make people feel like purposefully sad just for the sake of feeling sad. I feel like all the lyrics are like an expression of what I'm going through and really what's cool is seeing other people be like, I'm also feeling that. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I write lyrics and I'm like, I think other people can relate to this. Um, but I definitely do feel like a certain responsibility to like not be totally negative. And so I think that a lot of times like relating back to dogs, being completely negative and painting the world in a negative way is a choice you can make. But I like to kind of incorporate things in my life that feel specific to my experience it might allow people to connect uh, in their own. Like a lot of people have dogs, a lot of people, you know, have different things that go they go through in their lives and people can connect to those lyrics in a way that feels like it might be relatable instead of just kind of painting the negativity. So you have a bunch of nicknames. Yeah. Jewish Ed Sheeran, That's Jewish right. Capaldi, Jewish Folk Capaldi. Malone. Folk Malone. Have you started to embrace these since they've led to a collaboration with one of those artists? Yeah, it's insane. Like, I can't believe, I, I always want to say thank you to the person on TikTok who said Folk Malone first, because <laughs> I think that literally manifested a, folk, a, a Post Malone, Noah Khan collaboration. I embrace it fully. The other day, someone called me Harry Styles, H-A-I-R-Y <laughs> Styles, and I thought that was awesome. I love that kind of stuff. Like, it's just funny, and I don't know. I don't take, I don't take it too seriously, and like, I think it, like, leads to opportunities occasionally. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I hope I don't insult anybody by, like, comparing myself to them, but I also don't really care, so no, it's all they, good. They should be honored. Yeah. Maybe you could start planting them so that maybe you get that collaboration. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like Jewish Beyonce. It like, <laughs> doesn't even really work, but like I just want to work with Beyonce really bad. <laughs> that could be funny. We also learned in our extensive research that you used to be a class clown. Yes, yeah. Was that so you could start honing your skills to eventually be funny on Twitter? I think it led to me being funny on Twitter. I think it was like many great <laughs> class clowns, like, they just weren't that funny. I think I got funnier <laughs> later in my life. I was, like, very much a quantity over quality guy <laughs> when I was in school, like, just probably undiagnosed something, something going on, but I was just yelling out whatever I thought. I was super obnoxious. I like to think that my Twitter is more refined than my behavior <laughs> in math class in the seventh grade, that's for sure. 
You can, I think my teachers would probably <laughs> agree. Now you've also kind of found your voice on TikTok as well. What is the relationship with fans like when they have that level of access? I think it's really cool to be able to let people into your life and to let people feel part of you and connected beyond the music. I think that's what separates a lot of artists now or like people that are willing to, you know, show people what it's really like. I think it also creates, you know, issues with boundaries and issues with setting, you know, time limits for myself. Like I, I have problems with like always being on my phone and then feeling like, well, man, like why am I always having to be my phone when it's really me that's creating the situation for myself, <laughs> like always posting or like trying to be so relatable that I don't have privacy. Like those are definitely questions that I'm working on for myself right now. It's a learning process and like I'm not perfect at it. And I think what I really appreciate is my fans are incredibly forgiving, kind and patient with me. Like if I post like, I, you know, I'm gonna take a break or whatever, people are pretty okay with that. And the truth is my breaks are always like 15 minutes, but like in theory, I could take a break and they'd be okay with it, which is cool. My sock tan is absurd. Yeah, dude, I have a golf club, golf club <laughs> tan as well. Yeah, and a Birkenstock tan, honestly. I'm pretty white. <laughs> Having a golf club and a Birkenstock tan is... Sit down. Good girl. Yeah, good girl. Good girl. All the way, they're cheating. Yeah, all the way down. They're cheating. Good girl. I'm standing up. We're trying to get content. Oh, he <laughs> Doug does the same thing. He bites at flies if they're, yeah. if they're anywhere around her. Yeah, no, you hear like, the teeth clank yeah. together. So late last year, you wrote this about Penny. Two years ago, I brought you home and was never alone again. Thanks for changing my life. How has Penny changed your life? Penny has taught me a lot of patience and a lot of forgiveness too within myself. Like, sometimes I'll be like, why did you have to do that? Like, she'll like bark at a dog and like freak somebody out or like <laughs> shit in the floor. And I have to, I tell myself the truth, which is she's learning, she's a dog. She's figuring it out. You down, you go down, then the sit up, sit up. All the way down. She's learning, she's figuring <laughs> things out, as you can see. And I try to apply that same thing to myself whenever I can. Come here, Penny. Come here, come here, Penny. Like for now, example, like you want her to do the right things and you want yourself to do the right things and make the right choices, but it doesn't always work that way. And you have to be able to forgive yourself and, and understand that you're a work in progress. And that's been something that's really changed my life is I've been able to let some of my own mistakes and some of my own failures go uh, and the understanding that there's a lot of work to be done still and that it's, you know, normal to fail and to have to try again. Why do we love dogs? I think we love dogs because they represent innocence in a place, in a world that feels increasingly cynical and lonely and devoid of true, unadulterated kindness without ulterior motive. I think dogs have no ulterior motive. They All they want is to love you and to be near you. And I think it's so easy to distrust people now and to distrust yourself. And dogs make you trust and they make you believe in something. Um, I have a really hard time believing in anything a lot of the times. And I know it's like, that's a very cynical way to look at the world, but it's just how I feel. And dogs are something that I've always believed in. I believe in the, their love for, for us and for themselves and for other dogs. And it's just fun to see something true and something that you can't argue against or debate or divide. Everybody loves dogs, you know? Like, even if, like, doesn't matter what side of the political spectrum you're on or, you know, you could be a crazy psycho, like, liar or, like, the nicest person in the world, but you'll still pet a dog in the head when it walks by. And, and I think that's something really special. And I think that uh, it gets increasingly rare to have that. And dogs are kind of that forever reminder that we are able to love something. Thank you so much for doing this. Thanks Thank for going you. on the walk with us. Of course. Uh, really, really gracious of you to, to spend your time with us. Penny, I know your schedule is very busy. She's like, I got to get out of here. <laughs> so thank you for joining us. Thank you that's so much, man. Of course.